Hi, this is my red, green, blue LED driver. It was originally designed from a question on my on my forum, and I've just answered it and decided to make it a tutorial at the same time. Basically, this is uh, one way of many to control red, green, blue LEDs. It might not be the most efficient, but this uh, alternative allows you to do anything else with your with your program at the same time. So you'd be controlling keypads, uh, switches grabbing some ADC samples, doing whatever you want and this interrupt uh, driven uh, program will, uh, will work as intended around your code. Each of the PWM signals can be tr controlled from 0 to 100% duty cycle by controlling the associated register uh, from 0 to 255 and to start off with I'm declaring the microprocessor as an ATNF4550 and I've chosen this pick because it's got relatively fast PLL settings in this case 48 megahertz is what I'm using so it's going to be running at about 12 million instructions per second and it does this with a 20 megahertz oscillator connected to it uh, this is just a default config header that I've used to set up the um, the config settings I'm including this random gen.bass file it's developed by Octal on the Swordfish forums to generate a random number from 0 to 255 and I use this to determine which direction and which color to change later on after that I'm declaring all my variables from the timer 2 settings, uh, the signal pin for debugging, I'll get to that. And then I'm declaring the red, green and blue pins and they're on port C0, 1 and 2. And from here this is the user controlled PWM setting, so red underscore duty and green and blue. You could put the value 255 to resemble 100% duty cycle or you could put the value 127 to resemble 50%. After that I've declared uh, these values here for, they're more for the, the interrupt side of things. This random bell register is just used later on to store the random number generated from this routine. The microsecond and millisecond registers have been included so that I've got some sort of timing control with my program as well. Uh, because my interrupt is uh, occurring quickly, I can, uh, and I know how many microseconds it takes per interrupt, I could then develop a, a very quick bit of code that will uh, uh, keep a running track of exactly how many milliseconds have occurred and that way I can utilize this later on to control how fast things are changing like the, the, how fast the color changes from 0 to 100 percent or you could use it however you wanted. So I'll go down to the first line of code that's executed and that's these uh, pin settings. Just setting the pins as outputs and making them low. Then I'm resetting all my registers to a known state, in this case 0. I'm then generating a random uh, seed, well it's not so random because it's going to be 128 whenever the program starts. This is a starting value for my uh, random number generator and from here the sequence will be the same each time you turn the pick on. But you could set this so that it grabs uh, an analog sample from something and then uh, feeds the value into this initialize. That way it's got a, a true random start every time you turn the pick on. Timer 2 initialize just shoots up here and sets up the timer 2 settings. In this case, I'm setting it up for a 50 microsecond interrupt. So I'm setting up my timer to interrupt to occur 20,000 times a second. This is pretty quick and it allows me to get an, a nice fresh uh, frequency output on my PWM. This is my timer to interrupt. And to start off with, the first thing that's going to happen when, it, when the uh, program first gets to this interrupt, it's going to set the signal pin high. I use this for my own personal debugging to just to ensure that the total number of instruction cycles to service this routine do not exceed the uh, the time interval for the interrupt itself. So by setting it the signal pin high here and then setting it low, I'm generating a pulse and with that pulse in my simulation software, I can time exactly how long it takes and work backwards to find out how many uh, cycles it takes to perform or service this interrupt. From here, I'm saving the system variables. So just say for argument's sake, it was halfway through checking this while command. A couple of things have changed in the, uh, in the actual system registers. When it comes to here, it's going to back them up. So as it performs these if commands and addition, a bit of subtraction here and there. Any registers that are used in my main program and in my interrupt are backed up before they're used again. And at the end of this interrupt, they're actually restored. From here, uh, I'm going to check if the timer to interrupt flag was actually what triggered this interrupt. If it was, I'll reset the flag, increment my microsecond register by 50, and just check if a thousand microseconds or more has occurred. If it has, just increment it by a thousand and increment my millisecond register. Now I've just created a very accurate millisecond uh, routine or millisecond interval routine. 
so I can utilize this later on my code. I'm then going to be incrementing each of the program duty cycle registers. These aren't the ones that you'd set to create the duty cycle, these are the ones I use for comparison. And it's going to compare itself to what the desired duty cycle is and do a little bit of algorithm to figure out if it should turn the output pin on or off. From here the interrupt simply leaves after it restores the variables and sets my signal pin low and then it'll just return to wherever it came from within the program. So back back down to my main program, uh, I got to timer to initialize before and after that I'm setting a while true command. So this is a, an infinite loop, this is my main program as such between this command and when down here. There's a little bit of code here but it's really quite simple. I'm just storing a, a random value from 0 to 255 in, in this register and then I'm going to select the register and perform a case routine on it. The first case to be checked is if the value is between 0 and 42. The reason why I've chosen this range is because I have six desired outcomes. Uh, there's three different colors and there's two different directions in which each can go. So 2 by 3 is 6 and 255 divided by 6 is 42 and a half. So I've tried to get as close as I can to get an even random six uh, possible outcomes. The reason why I've chosen four milliseconds is because I want, want it to take a total of one second for the uh, color to ramp from for one uh, extreme to the other extreme. And from here, uh, once it's performed this uh, this function, it'll then leave the uh, the select case routine and perform another random selection. So everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, from here it's uh, working backwards down to zero and then of course doing the same thing for each color. I'll go to my simulation software and maybe it'll make a bit more sense if you're a little lost at the moment. So I'll start the simulation. Oh, before I get started, this is just an oscilloscope. Pretty much everything with red on the inputs and outputs is connected. It's electrically connected. Everything with green is electrically connected and everything with blue is the same as well. Uh, there's, there's no oscillator um, or power connected on this because my simula simulation software allows me to get away with it. So I'll start the simulation and as you can see blue's just started off green, now red's kicking in, blue's going down to zero, green's going down to zero and you can watch the, the, uh, the PWM signals uh, in their finest. 